Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Geopolitical risk hammered stocks today, leading to a triple-digit loss on the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500's worst decline since April. The market-rattling events began late morning with news a Malaysian jet en route from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur crashed over eastern Ukraine. All 295 aboard were killed. Immediately, speculation arose that the plane flying close to the Russian border in an area largely controlled by pro-Russian separatists had been brought down by a missile. The stock sell-off picked up steam late this afternoon when the Israeli prime minister instructed his military to begin a ground offensive in Gaza. Thursday night, troops were already moving in, supported by tanks, artillery, and naval gunboats. The blue-chip Dow finished at its lows of the day, falling 161 points, dropping below 17,000. NASDAQ off 62 to 43.63, a nearly 1.5% slide. The S&P 500 down 23, off 1.2%. Safety seekers poured into treasuries, sending prices higher and yields lower. Gold gained more than 1 percent. Even the price of wheat rose because Ukraine and Russia are both big producers of that commodity. Unanswered questions abound about what happened to that Boeing 777. What brought it out of the sky as it cruised above eastern Ukraine at 33,000 feet? Phil LeBeau has been following the story all day and joins us with the very latest developments and what we know now. Phil? And, Tyler, what we know at this point is that the U.S. has said that it was a surface-to-air missile that brought down MH17 earlier today while it was flying over eastern Ukraine. Here's what was involved in this entire incident when you look at today. The number of passengers on board, 290, 280, I should say, and a crew of 15. It lost contact. The plane lost contact at 33,000 feet. There was no distress signal. So it was very clear that whatever happened was catastrophic at 33,000 feet. And again, the surface-to-air missile, that's no longer a question. The U.S. government says intelligence confirms for them that this was, in fact, a, a case of the plane being shot down out of the sky. That's according to Vice President Joe Biden. Those are his words, shot down out of the sky. And if you look at maps of the incident, it's very clear that the plane, as it was going from Amsterdam over to Kuala Lumpur, was almost through Ukrainian airspace when it was hit by that missile. We went back and we looked at the same maps from Flight Radar 24. An hour or two later, all airlines flying now around the airspace of Ukraine. Not surprising, given the fact that shortly after this happened, Tyler, almost every major airline that flies anywhere near Ukraine all of them came out and said, we are telling our pilots to steer clear of there. All flight paths will go around there. And in fact, some airlines have suspended flights into Kiev. So this is a case where they're still investigating exactly what happened in those final moments. But it is, according to the U.S. government, a case of the plane being shot down. What do we know, Phil, about who's investigating the crash site on the ground and whether the black boxes have been discovered? Who's in control the black there? Well, the black boxes have been discovered. Whether or not they're being held by Ukrainian insurgents or the, the Russian government, that's a big question at this point. And who will take control of this debris field, which stretches over 10 miles? That remains to be seen. Phil LeBeau, thank you very much. Joining us now, Larry McDonald. He's senior director at New Edge, where he deals with macro policy issues. Larry, as you heard from Phil's report, this is no longer an accident. It was an in intentional act. How does this new information impact the investing climate, the business climate? How significant is all of this? Well, Susie, as we came into the summer, brokers, financial advisors, Wall Streets have been telling our viewers watching us right now that this is going to be the summer of low volatility, stay away from bonds, uh, and stay away from gold. And if you look at today, that's been turned upside down. Uh, bonds, the 30-year hit t the lowest yield in almost uh, at 24, over 24 months. And then if you look at volatility, we had a, one of the largest surges in, in, in many, many months. And, and there's just a total different upside-down world relative to what Wall Street's been telling our mm -hmm. viewers. So what is your advice to people who are wondering what I should do uh, with respect to this? Is this a time to uh, basically let, stay still and let, and let things develop? Or is it a time for moves? Well, you want to consider, Tyler, uh, air travel, you want to watch carefully, because if, if this affects air travel, that affects consumption. Global GDP estimates going into the year were about 5 percent, and now they're down at 3.75. The U.S. GDP going into the year, 
in terms of economic activity were a lot higher, the expectations. So if we have less air travel, if we have people staying at home, that hurts consumption. So I think you want to look very carefully at the trends over the next five days to figure if this really is a terrorist attack and, and what are the, the next steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, what are the, sort of the next steps that we can expect here? Because, you know, this is coming a day after sanctions were declared against Russia. Uh, and now we've got this uh, incident, and we don't know all the connections here. But if this turns out to be a prolonged superpower conflict, what does all that mean for us? You said the world has been turned upside down. What does that exactly mean? Well, it means opportunities. If you look at Russian equities, I was on CNBC in March, and we recommended getting long Russian equities. You could see a tremendous buying opportunity there because th th those stocks are going to get absolutely destroyed. So emerging markets, uh, foreign stocks, Russian equities, this is everybody's terrified of them. So investors want to want to buy things that really the greatest moment of fear are the best buying opportunities, and I think this will play out over the next month. Money moved into bonds and gold today. Is that an enduring uh, uh, trend? I think so. That, Tyler, there's so many things with, with, um, with, both, with both bonds and gold. The bond market has tried to sell off three or four times, and each time we've had these vicious rallies. Uh, there's just a, there's a tremendous amount of, uh, there's a lack of supply, really. And, and because the Fed's done a lot of QE, uh, even though QE's coming off, there's other issues behind the scenes. Gold. And Wall Street hates gold. Well, every firm on the street had a, had a, had a, a target below 1300 on gold going into the year, and now gold's been going up. So I think you do the opposite of what the crowd's doing, and I think gold and bonds over the next couple of months would be a nice place to be. What if we get a lot more information over the next 24 hours? Could everything just turn the other way around and we go back to, quote, normal? Well, you know, you still have you still have uncertainty in the region. You've got uh, Mr. Putin, and, and 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 you have the midterm elections. So, so remember, the Republicans. You're seeing, watch the wires. Mr. McCain on Twitter has been going after the president a little bit. The midterm elections. We we look, we did a study over the last 60 years. Volatility around the midterm elections is twice the normal. Uh, the, uh, the 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 rate of off a year. Mm -hmm. So this is a midterm election year, and you're going to see that the, the both the White House and the Congress uh, throw barbs at each other. That creates volatility, mm -hmm. and I think that's what you'll see going forward. The Republicans only need to pick up six seats, six seats in the Senate. If the Republicans take the Senate, it, it changes a whole bunch of dynamics for the economy. All right, Larry, thank you so much for coming on the program, Larry McDonald. Thank you from New Edge.